Yeah. Awesome. So lovely to have you here, Egypt, um, today for the Fighters and Champions show. Great to have you here. How are you doing today? You know, I'm very blessed, uh, very relaxed, and uh, very excited, very optimistic. Awesome. Amazing. Love it. And so, Egypt, t tell us, for those of the audience who don't already know who you are, and um, tell us a bit about yourself and uh, in terms of your origin story, how you got involved in boxing. Great question. So uh, I've always been an athlete um, since my youth, uh, football, basketball, um, and martial arts were always um, something I really enjoyed and appreciated. I was pretty well-rounded. Um, I even ran track for a little bit, um, but there was nothing like boxing um, from day one. Um, I, I think what really got me into the sport was um, my uncles used to watch like the Tyson fights and, um, you know, boxing would bring the whole family together. And, you know, you had that anticipation, that hype. I didn't quite understand everything, but I understood what Tyson was doing. And, um, you know, I, I just remember the disappointment from my uncles. I mean, they were emotionally um, hurt when, and devastated when Tyson lost to Buster Douglas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just... I, I never knew, like, as a kid um, when I was watching all these fights and then also learning and training myself, I, I never knew that, that some of the same individuals that I read books about or was studying about that later on I would end up doing business with. And, and you know, they'd be my heroes. And, and in some cases, you know, I guess they look at me as their hero. Um, but what really got me um, into the business is um, I had a um, – what I would call a challenge is um, I was in Northern California. Uh, I was really successful in the MBA sector um, and also government. Um, anything that had to do with the community and, and, and government and sports, whether you're a franchise star um, and, and what, whatever business um, the team had, um, I was very involved in. And, and I come from very savage roots. So the town I come from, very savage place. Um, we don't have theme parks, you know, we don't have, um, a lot of, you know, wholesome things to do. I mean, pretty much everybody just fights every day, you know, and plays sports. So, you know, I, I had, um, you know, all the different excuses around me to not be successful and, to you know, get involved in all the things, um, in your communities that are uh, toxic or, um, or could become a setbacks. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was able to adapt. So, you know, I always say I was able to work on both sides of the bridge, you know, so I'd hang out with my friends. Um, you know, they had a lot more money than I did coming up, but um, I saw well um, and I saw like what that felt like, you know, um, being around it. But then I also was on the other side of the bridge and, you know, being able to adapt to both worlds really, um, you know, gave me a, an advantage, even in boxing. Um, when I got older, as I'm, you know, working in business in the community, um, I, I had a situation where some individuals actually tried to rob my neighbors and they ended up um, shooting and killing um, him and anyone else who had seen what they did. And so they came for me because uh, I just happened to be outside with a neighbor minding my own business. And, um, you know, a couple of days later, um, they actually tried to kill me and, and it, I wasn't shot at. Um, I was actually hit in both femoral arteries, 45s. And this is where um, I, I don't mind saying that, um, you know, um, God, I call him the Supreme out of reverence. But, um, you know, the Supreme and boxing saved my life that day. Um, and they said uh, they measured it um, that I ran 400 yards, two flights of stairs. And I don't remember getting up those stairs because I'm bleeding out of both femoral arteries and I was hitting different parts of my body. But I have been running up and down the steps with weights and things as one of my boxing regiments. So um, that kind of um, that discipline actually came at the, the best time possible and um, being spiritually grounded came at, at the best time possible. And um, one thing people look at it as like, oh, you're lucky to survive, but I couldn't walk. So my ACL, MCL, and PCL was all destroyed. And um, I had to rehabilitate myself. So I didn't actually have any, um, you know, um, medical staff or medical um, um, teams that were, they didn't even have a, 
solution or we never even had a conversation about walking again. You know, they were just pretty much, hey, you know, you're lucky to to live. They had me on a bunch of pain pills, um, heavy um, pain pills, things of this nature. And so um, I decided mentally that, you know, as a man, you know, you, you, you're you you're built to be a provider, but also um, I didn't want to spend my life in a wheelchair. So I got in a swimming pool um, after I had studied a treatment plan um, that a similar athlete with a similar situation. I mean, I, I had to really um, stay disciplined. I, I, I decided one night I wasn't going to sleep until I found, um, an alternative, a solution. And so I found it somehow. I still can't tell you how I found, um, a university of Florida treatment plan. And that was something they did in the water. So I, I, I called my grandmother up and I, I, you know, said, Hey, I'm, I'm going to have to come use your pool every day. Uh, obviously do some some uh, work for her to, you know, make her happy. And um, I just got to it. You know, I used my mental, um, the anger, um, the frustration, um, all that I channeled into my workouts. And um, believe it or not, I went from not being able to um, even stand up to now I'm able to, because um, I couldn't even straighten my legs because on my MCL, which is kind of like a rubber band in your knee. You can't even straighten your legs. So every night I was sleeping, my legs were cramped up like I was in a kneeling position. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so I couldn't even rest properly. So um, being able to actually stretch my legs um, was the first, first step. And then from there, I was able to stand up, which was another step. Then I'm, I'm, I'm not walking, but I'm limping, a limp walk, <laughs> you know, but... Um, you know, I was able to, you know, start walking and, um, then I started, um, turning from walking to, I walked up my friend's stairs just to show him, you know, I, I, I wasn't a punk. I wasn't going to stay down. And so I'm walking up their stairs. That was mentally something right there because, you know, um, you know, some people, they talk about triggers and PTSD. Well, you know, going up and down those stairs was, I, I could have looked at it as trauma, but I looked at it as um, results and progress. So I did that. And then um, I started walking long distances. Um, meanwhile, I'm training my upper body and, you know, training as much as possible. And then I got to where I could jog and then eventually run. And um, then I remember the first day I was able to play basketball. And I was definitely, I could see, I had no explosion, no lift. Um, you know, it was definitely not the same, but the fact that I was doing that, it it showed me something. So, um, one thing I decided is, um, you know, um, and, and keep in mind, there was an athlete named Sean Taylor, um, who was in, he was a physical specimen, one of the top NFL players in the world. And he got shot in his femoral artery with a 22, one leg, 122 and died. I got shot in both femoral arteries with 45s and obviously I lived to tell about it. And it's not that I'm any better than him or, you know, it's nothing of this matter, but I believe my mental was so strong during that point. It it was my superpower. And so um, I saw Vegas as a place where later on, because I didn't want any, I didn't want anyone to feel like they had the power to run me out of my city or my town or my region So I kind of had that pride in me, but I looked at Vegas as an opportunity to um, not only train, but train with the best athletes in the world. Mm -hmm. And I I took that challenge. So when I came to Vegas, I never told anyone what happened to me. Um, I didn't want anyone taking it easy. Um, And I went to the best gyms, the best fighters, and I was kicking ass. And you know, um, this is what led me to actually uh, Floyd and 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 his team and and his crew. And um, I mean, honestly, the rest was history. I mean, when when you talk about boxing, um, I I developed um, under some of the best coaches and trainers very fast because I always had, um, you know, I had the foundations and the fundamentals, and I also was a good athlete. But now I had to use my mind more, the technique. So I had to outthink guys because I didn't still have that same physical explosion. But, you know, one thing is I had so much purpose and determination whenever I was training, whenever I was coming in. I had that advantage because 
maybe other guys like I would catch them slipping every day, you know, because you know they're not they're not thinking at the focus and they're not they weren't thinking at the their purpose and determination. They weren't able to match that fire I had in me every day. And I didn't want no excuses. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to ask it, around the training was with the boxer. Were you training more for like um, for fitness, mental health, like to compete, uh, go pro? At what level were you sort of taking it? What was the training purpose for? Great question. I actually was was training for um, my mental and, and for the fitness. And, and it's just something I decided I wanted to do. Mm. But I, I, I was. Um, training so well at such a uh, rapid pace that they were already developing me to go pro. I mean, you know, they, they were giving me the same regiments as their pro fighters. And um, I was cooking in the gym and um, what I had a, um, an intersection, you know, I mean, I, to this day, I still spar with guys. I still get in there and work. Um, I haven't as much recently, but it's something I, I'll always do. Mm-hmm. But um what separated me is that as I was around these guys and I'm bleeding and sweating with these guys and I'm, I'm, you know, um, in the gym with them daily and we're at each other's house. Um, you know, our, our, our families are hanging out, you know, we're, we're getting very close. I started to realize that I had all the background that none of them had, mm. you know, um, I was always one of the best students in the country um, I, I went to, you know, school, I went to, you know, the university. I mean, I, I always was very sharp on business. And so, um, I didn't come in wanting to get into the business. It just, it, it drew me out of circumstance and, um, different guys started asking me for help mm-hmm. and, you know, they don't want to hear your story. They don't want to listen to what it's going to take. They just want to see you get it done. Yeah. And, I started to get things done, you know, whether it was contracts, sponsors, just organizing different opportunities. And, and I also, I had a, I had a, and I've always had the advantage where I have a lot of friends outside of boxing. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of associations outside of the sport. So I had a whole market. I had a whole range of people, you know, to, uh, you know, connect with and tap into that none of them had. And so that really uh, opened doors to where I started getting so deep on the business that I, I just, just naturally, I didn't, I didn't plan on not going pro just like I hadn't planned on going pro. It, it was an opportunity I had. Um, I, I'll never forget, you know, my trainers were setting up for cards um, to be on. And normally in the fight world, when you first start, you have to pay to be on these cards. Um, no, these trainers were willing to pay out of pocket because they felt I just, I had what, what they can't teach these fighters, you know, and, you know, whether it's charisma, whether it's just, you know, just being able to, you know, work, you work with the business. Mm. Um, and then I had the talent, but I decided I I was going to go full time in the business because I decided I didn't want to be the poster. I want to run the show. Love it. That's it. And so speaking about that business side, so what level of client or fighter can come to you? Is it uh, aspiring? Do they have to be like on the US Olympic team or once they go pro like or amateurs? Like what level? And then what would you do? I know you mentioned a part around the contracts and the sponsors. So talk to us a bit more around the advisory role that you do and maybe some of the people you've worked with in the past. Absolutely. Well, um, again, great question. I, I have um, legends that I've revived their careers as far as, you know, getting them back um, into um, the business and appearances and, and getting them paid again. Um, you know, there were guys that were losing their homes. They were losing relationships. Um, the fraternities weren't so happy about having them around anymore. Um, you know, that was part that was part of me reviving um, even my own career, because I showed them what I can do for them. And these are the heroes for the stars of today. So, um, I mean, under my belt, I have the best of the best, whether they're legendary or whether, you know, they're, they're today's stars. And, you know, for the most part, I mean, I, I, I have now clients from all sports, all sectors and, and including government now, but, 
Um, I do have um, some of your um, young generations, you know, the guys who are, um, they're ranked top in the nation right now. They're kids. You know, I have kids that actually reach out to me as the young as seven years old. Um, and, and, and then up to, you know, your 15, 16, 17 year olds, um, only because they see the relationships I have, you know, I obviously know what I'm doing at this point, but, um, what I typically try to avoid is I, there was a time when I was taking on fighters that were on their, you know, you know, trying to build their records and things of this nature, mm -hmm. um, as an advisor and, and, and working with promoters and sometimes working even as a promoter, it's tough because, you know, I invest and when I get involved in someone's career, I'm all the way in. Mm -hmm. And what I found early on is that you're, you're, you're going to sour your, your business or sour yourself by working with guys who really just, they've got to put in that work. And a lot of times you put in the work behind them, they end up, making poor decisions or they don't always stay committed to the game plan and they run off with something or somebody else. And so just out of, you know, where the game is at, I mean, I'm now partnered with the world boxing council and um, I speak with president Suleiman on pretty much a daily basis, you know, as far as um, you know, mental health, but also we influence the rankings um, at certain points. Um, at this day and time, I, I I have to stay committed and be fair to the the champions because their business is um, is much tougher than what people understand. Um, you know, a lot of times you have family members that have never seen this kind of money that are um, a part of their financial um, situations, and um, you know you have people on their team that are expecting this to work out for for everyone. And so, you know, you're not just working with the fighter. You know, I work with the family. I work with the teams. I work with associations. Um, and in boxing, you know, you have um, – I won't speak on all of them, but you have different um, outside organizations that get involved. Um, they have historically been been kind of um, ingrained in the sport as well as government and, and royal families and, and world leaders. So – it's a very dicey game and you want to make sure that you're working with people who understand the high stakes of what we're doing. Yeah, I love that. And you, you mentioned st slightly on the uh, part of WBC quick side question. Thoughts yes. on Garnu making top 10 uh, with the WBC is in uh, Francis and Garnu. Now uh, I believe this week he's been uh, officially in the top 10. You know, I I I trust um, Suleiman's judgment on this because um, what people may not understand is the World Boxing Council has to be committed to safety. It, it's it's a council, so it's not you know Mauricio has obviously a lot of say so, and um, you know he he is the the president of the of the council, but it's it's a council. It's it's there's different layers, so. Um, you have doctors, you have um, government representatives, et cetera. So, um, you know, there's there's not just a, a one man um, decision maker behind some of these things. And, you know, to be honest, you know, we've seen different um, athletes um, go to different sports and, and actually transition well. Um, mm -hmm. I'll use Brock Lesnar as as an example for mixed martial arts for MMA. Um, he was, he actually fought one of my good friends, Frank Mir, um, mm -hmm. for a UFC heavyweight title. Um, he had less than 10 fights, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, people, you know, they say wrestling's fake or whatever. I mean, the results may not always be real, but the injuries and the physical toll are. So, um, Nagano is not just someone from the street corner. Um, he's somebody who has been training at, at the highest levels and, and he also, um, his trainer, um, Dewey, uh, Dewey Cooper, DC Cobra. Mm. Yes. He's, he's been a longtime friend of mine. Um, you know, he understands what level these guys are at. I mean, he works with kickboxers, he works with MMA fighters and he works with, with boxers as was his background. So, um, had he not transitioned with someone like, um, like, um, like Dewey, 
I don't know that he'd be in this position. So, I mean, if you look at heavyweights um, compared to some of the other classes, like if you were going to look at the 130, 135, 140, and, and so forth, even, you know, your welterweight, this is definitely something, you know, I, I hear guys, they, they chirp from other sports and they call out Tanker, they call out, you know, Ryan Garcia or Devin Haney or whoever. And, you know, um, even Shakur Stevenson, you know, these guys, it looks easy. But, you know, those guys have been – their pedigree is strong. Mm. And, you know, if you were to try to come from MMA in those divisions, it, it would be a bad idea. Now, heavyweight, uh, I'm not going to say that there's not heavyweight talent. You have guys with pedigree um, in the heavyweight division as well. But I'm not sure if we're being honest. It's as competitive as some of the other um, divisions. And, I mean, let's just face it. Fury is a cream of the crop in the heavyweight division. He clearly showed that. I mean, some people might have thought he won the fight. You know, um, I, of course, I, 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 I see how Fury edged him out. Um, but to knock down, uh, you know, not just any old heavyweight champion or not just any old heavyweight fighter, Fury is a big problem. 100%. We've, you know, so I, I have to say... It, it's a little surprising, you know, that he's that he's ranked. And I could understand how how the average fan doesn't understand. But if you get a little bit more on the intricate side of things, um, even even the sanctioning bodies, because it's it's not just um, the athletic commissions and the sanctioning bodies all work together to make sure that every fight is fair. Mm -hmm. um, you don't see too many tuna cans, uh, taxi uh, cab drivers fighting someone at, at a championship level. So they understand that physically that that could put somebody in harm's way. This is still a, a kill or be killed sport. There have been deaths in our sport. Um, there are serious injuries um, that, that can definitely unfold. So um, to be honest, hey, um, if, if Francis feels that he can compete at that level, ultimately he's the boss of his future. You know, I mean, we'll see in his next fight if it's something he's going to continue to do, but he's at least, um, he, he's done well. Definitely, because I, I actually had him one point up when I watched it the first time. Um, I saw a level going into the final round and I, I think he just did enough, but I can also see why or how Fury won the fight because essentially it's a boxing match. It's not about out like hitting the heavier shots all the time. It's sometimes just about stealing the rounds and getting the rounds one after another. But again, as I get what you mean in terms of with the heavier weights, your your punching power can be more of an equalizer rather than in the divisions like the lightweights, etc. You may still be able to bang heavy, but it won't necessarily be enough to outdo the skill gap that will probably exist between the two fighters in terms of as boxers, like pure boxers. So, um, no, definitely great. Um, speaking on, obviously, we've mentioned one of your roles as an advisor. We'd love to yeah. get to know you a bit more in terms of, like, other roles that you play in your life, um, you know, whether that's at work or at home or, again, with the Supreme. Yes. Well, I, I'm, I'm very spiritually based. Um, actually every Friday, I, I believe you've been on one of the calls. Um, we have a prayer and leadership group because, uh, one thing we found with mental health is it's not all about the pills, um, and the medicine that will, um, assist everyone in, in, you know, having progress and, you know, kind of battling and facing some of those demons, you know, that, that can uh, hold you back from, from, you know, being a better individual, um, being more grounded, more centered. Um, that is definitely something that I take very serious because um, it's it's everything. You know, it's actually um, my integrity and my character um, that I've learned um, from being spiritually grounded is is what has given me more success in everything I do, mm -hmm. um, whether it be um, the sport of boxing or um, the other sports I'm involved in. Um, you know, in government because I, I I made that transition so. Um, you know, boxing actually set the stage to go to another level. It teaches you um, how to make things happen out of nothing. And, and you know, the less tools you have, 
um, you know, you can still have a, a great impact. It, it sets you up for, you know, in, in our, our government, which is very tricky. And then you have other governments where it's equally as tricky. And, you know, you have all these different, they call, call the word um, politics in boxing. Um, and, and it's, it's used quite a bit. Uh, but another aspect of boxing that people may not understand is um, it brings tourism. Um, it's a symbol and a representative for world peace. And, you know, when you're able to bring people together through sport, which it is the oldest sport in the world, um, there, there's a reason why boxing has lasted this long. You know, you may not get all the fights you want to see. Um, I know the networks are kind of struggling at time to, you know, to um, make the revenue that it takes because boxing takes a lot, you know, to and it takes a lot of revenue to put these huge fights together. Um, with that being said, um, when you have integrity, when you have character, you know, you're, you're actually able to be far more successful than someone who um, is just out for the, themselves, um, you know, a lack of purpose. I mean, you have to really have purpose um, in, in being able to not not just stick around in this business, but to make it in the first place. You know, um, I didn't have a family member. I didn't have anyone who said, hey, I'm going to bring you in. Um, the the work that I've done even so far, I mean, I, I forget about yesterday. I don't need awards and certificates and praise like, yay. You know, I mean, I I, I do what, what I'm called to do. Um, but it, it'll take some years before people quite understand the impact um, that me and also now my team have been able to make on, on the sport and, and for the people, um, it's a thankless job. So, you, you know, you have to have, um, spiritual grounding, you know, you're dealing with very dangerous people, very dangerous environments that are connected. So, you know, you, you have to be on, on your A game. Um, as far as the government side, um, boxing, um, I know we'll be talking more about, uh, fight for mental health, but, um, boxing and being around the sport really showed me gaps in, in, you know, where, where people's, um, mental health, um, you know, their physical health, um, discipline, lack of discipline, um, you know, poor decisions, great decisions. Um, I mean, when you're around, um, these guys, um, as I've been honored and, 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 you know, it's a humbling experience because, I get to see all the different stories from, from an everyday perspective, you know, people see them as great fighters, but I see what makes them a great anything, you know, just in, in being around them and talking to them and just seeing where, where, you know, they apply certain, um, you know, fundamentals and techniques. And um, it's really motivating when you see how, just how disciplined some of these guys truly are. You know, everybody's not so disciplined, but when you see like they live it, like, you know, it, it, it motivates you in every way. So I I get a sneak peek at greatness every single day, you know, and, and that on its own is such a gift because um, you're able to pass these things down. So when you're talking to someone in government or you're talking to someone in education or a first responder or a veteran or um you know, someone who's struggling in, in school or, or they're struggling in life, you know, you, you can apply a lot of these principles. And, um, you know, you have this great book, uh, 12 Principles of Success. Um, you know, I, I, I obviously, you know, know that it, it takes a lot of character and, and you have to have principles to be successful in anything. So when, when you take those things from boxing and you apply them in other areas, um, the focus, um, the vision, you, you know, um, these guys are, are honed in one-on-one. -on -one. It, it's not a team sport where, you know, if somebody else fumbles if someone else misses a shot, you know, someone else makes the, you know, the wrong play or misses something, mm. it can affect you. I mean, there's still a team aspect as far as your trainers, you know, your, your business team. So you still need a team. But when when the lights are on, when 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 um, the performance is is um, active, it's 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 um, one on one. It's it's um, an individual situation. So the fact that they can tune out the crowd, 
but also hear the crowd. Mm-hmm. You know, the fact that they can stay focused on, you know, the person, they can see them breathing heavy. They can see what's in, what's in them because they can look them in the eyes. And then you see that, like, when I'm talking to fighters, there's different things that I, I watch. It's like when when people are interacting with them, even I learned this with stars. You know, our, our, I would say fighters really showed me even more about other stars because people think, and I'll use Floyd as an example, they think when they're in the room with them, he's not paying attention to everything you're saying or doing. Hmm. You know, they think that these guys don't hear you when you're saying weird things or when you're trying to talk loud so that you get their attention. They're used to this, you know, and so um, you're already making a um, a statement to them sometimes without saying anything. They're just watching your body language. They're masters of watching um, your body language and knowing when to go in for the kill. So I started to notice I have this, too. It's like. When people are talking, I'm dialed right in. You know, mm-hmm. I'm giving them full attention. And sometimes people are, in in general, they're all over the place. They're looking here, looking there. They're on their phones. You know, they're not really locked into, um, you know, what you're saying or your communication. So they miss a lot of things. And so, you know, having that, that supervision, having that super focus, being disciplined, and, and then not needing praise. You know, these guys will stay in shape. Men and women will Mm. stay in shape, whether they have a fight coming up, whether the contract's been signed, whether they have a bout agreement. So so, uh, so just to kind of um, break that bit down, because I I completely love um, the where we're going there, but it's tying very nicely into the next part, which again, which we're talking about the the 12 key principles of success, boxing principles. So what I want to do is just share on screen the 12 key principles um, Please. and some of them we've, you've already been discussing around the likes of vision and um, discipline has been mentioned focus, but I want to say, obviously you've had a chance to read the, the book, go over some of the philosophies. Uh, it'd be great to hear, you know, your thoughts around these 12 key principles and which ones, you know, which two or three perhaps stand out for yourself and have led towards your success in and out of the ring. Absolutely. Um, I mean, faith, vision, teamwork, focus, um, hard work and dedication, your discipline, the will to win, uh, resilience, confidence, respect, humility, and legacy. I don't, I don't believe that you, you can be successful all the way with anything, whether it's boxing, uh, or a life without having each of these principles. Um, you know, they all have their own, um, strength. And, and it's a superpower. I mean, humility, you know, um, is one that sticks out to me because um, a lot of times people look at that as, oh, I'm being weak or I'm, I'm you know, um, being submissive. But actually, when you're humble, you realize that you always have work to do. You know, you can always get better. And so having that humility says, you know what, um, I don't know it all, you know. Um, I don't have everything. And, 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 you know, that goes into your integrity because um, you can have confidence, you know, it, it's okay to, I mean, you need confidence because, you know, you may not have everything, you know, you, you might be, um, you know, stuck where your, your back is to the wall, but when you have the humility to say, I don't know everything, you know, that's also respecting the game that that's also, um, you know, showing that, you know, you're, you're willing to be um, um, dedicated and committed to what you do. And it, and it brings a different response. Like, for example, you know, people will ask me, do I know somebody or do I know something? Now, I may I may know I, I, I may think that I know very well, but, you know, I, I tend to say, you know what, um, educate me. You know, so I'll tell someone, hey, educate me. I I may know this person or if I really don't, I won't say yes. Mm. I I can say, oh, I know of this person or I've met that person before, but I don't know them on the same level or, you know, just that honesty, you know, or or if someone says, do you know, do you have the answer to something or do you have this done? When you answer honestly, you can see the relief Mm. and now they're able to come and help you. You know, I mean... I have tough conversations every day. We're in the results business. 
So when someone asks you a question in, in, in our field, it could be very dangerous to your health if, if you're dishonest. Mm, absolutely. I, I like this. No better way to put that. That Absolutely. There, there's real repercussions towards giving answers which aren't truth because it's it's better to to die on truth than to live a lie and be found out because the trouble will be twice as much if we correct get there i, I wanted us to speak obviously I, I appreciate you're a very busy man but before we go definitely want to touch more on you know fight for mental health tell us more around how that started what you're doing now and you know what people can do to to get involved thank you so much um fight for mental health it, it it says it right there in in the name is we fight for mental health and uh, being around these fighters you know the short version is um, I was seeing um, areas of substance abuse I was seeing um, issues of self sabotage um, I was you know watching um, people that are legendary I was watching their confidence slip um, I, I was just watching how you know some of their family relationships were deteriorating. Um, economics, um, you know, they're, they're, that's a, a part of their pride is, you know, when they're used to, you know, bringing in a certain amount of revenue, they work hard for that. And then to not have that anymore. And then possibly even worse to see others doing better than you that maybe were in your circle or maybe are in the fraternity. Um, I can see that that was very troubling mentally for them. And it, it takes people down a very bad path, a dark path. And so um, just studying this and seeing this from so many different sectors, I mean, in my world, I don't take what I know or what what has happened with one and, and relay that information to anyone else. You know, I keep things in confidence and trust, and that's how I'm able to be so effective. But when I was seeing this as such a repetitive situation, it was so consistent um, I, I was watching and looking around and I saw these same habits and, and these same factors were were around other people that I, I knew very close. So I decided, yes, I went to school for psychology, but I didn't understand what mental health was. I had never really heard mental health at the time when, when I, I got involved in this purpose and I decided just like before, like, I don't stop until I find the answer, the solution. So I got online and I'm doing all my researching, you know, nonstop and I find mental health. And then I'm looking at, um, well, you have people that help with this. And so I'm looking at the clinics and the medical providers. And so I started talking to them and I went, I traveled the, the world. I traveled uh, around the country and I said, treat me like a dummy you know, treat me as you would a patient. And so just to learn the process and I just saw so many gaps, um, you know, that's what got me into government legislation. I, I saw gaps in, in, you know, the, the resources being available to the communities um, on an individual or on uh, a group level. Um, I saw that the providers are in a sense compromised because if they don't have, quote unquote sick people or they don't have patients, well then they don't have any revenue. So they didn't really have a lot of incentive in 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 getting people to um a higher level where you know they're able to cope better, um, they're making better progress. And so I, I was just seeing various issues and and then you know the other issue is um when you're starting something new, people don't want to take the chance. You know, they want to see you do all the work first before they get involved. So all these things are a gamble. And so I did it, you know, I, I mean, I have not made all the progress. Um, I mean, every time I see um, a mass shooting, every time I see more violence, every time I see, you know, something that I know is, is deteriorating the mental health um, of our, our globe and our domestic, um, you know, parts of this country, um, I see that I have a lot more work to do. What I'm doing now to where people can get involved is um, I'm creating alliances on, on a more macro level. Uh, we hit the networks. Um, we had guys talking about mental health after their fights and, and you know, even dedicating their fights to mental health, which was powerful. I think was that one I saw Danny Garcia really gave it. Sorry to interrupt there. But in no the, problem. His speech was really moving afterwards when he spoke about the challenges, you know, broke down the ring after his post fight, you could really see the 
the, the battles that he's been facing behind closed door, but been having the fight scene to be able to express that and to raise awareness for other, you know, men or women who could be struggling. But yeah, continue. Sorry. So just no problem. I mean, Danny Garcia is one of them. You know, you had Tyson Fury, Ryan Garcia, but I mean, we, you know, Antonio Tarver started with me from the very beginning. I mean, I, I've had even President Trump get involved in, and so many different um, icons have been, you know, able to unite. And that's what we did with Fight for Mental Health is we united um, individuals who actually were competitive to a point where um, they couldn't even communicate with each other. And, and you know, they saw each other as rivals. Um, you know, people that necessarily didn't want to deal with people or had issues in the past. Um, we've been able to unite so many people. And, and, and honestly, you don't hear people don't see the, the work because they, you know, our media um, is, is not a good thing for fight for mental health because they get their clicks and they get their clickbait out of causing issues and causing problems. So there's been times when I've had to confront them about their behavior and um, really let them know because they they would definitely uh, at times not do interviews when they're talking about mental health. Um, you can see guys like uh, Ellie Setback or or and I hate to name people's but you know Fight Hype and Fight Hub. I mean they they legitimately told me that they they don't monetize off of fixing you know such a major issue and they didn't want to see this um you know go to um a better um higher dimension and so they have the, the only time is when they see that maybe these guys spoke out or you know they could get a few extra clicks then they want to start conveniently talking about it but in their own way um mm -hmm. to where they're not informed they're not educated um, they wouldn't even take the time to even hear what was going on. And so we took it to a, another dimension. I mean, I, I work with the best media in the country. So if the fight media didn't, um, you know, come along, this was no problem to me. We still got it done. And 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 now a lot of them look less relevant. Um, you know, people are starting to, you know, be called out. I mean, I don't have any problem with these guys personally. I, I know them all. Um, I don't think they're bad people, but they're compromised. It's just what it is. And, you know, many different sectors of this were compromised. So them getting better, they love to see when guys have issues. They love to see when guys are even having financial issues and, and they can contribute to this um, mentally because now you get a better bargain, you get a better deal, you know, in negotiation. I mean, there's so many different factors. You see Jamar Charlo. Um, he's able to take the time that he needs to get back um, in, in the right form and fashion because now you have the World Boxing Councils and other sanctioning bodies are taking mental health more seriously. So we, we've made a huge impact, but what we're doing now is we're taking 100 businesses um, in, 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 as the front lines um, to show them that you can now compete with your other businesses by giving back to the community specifically, um, creating a mindset experience. It's something we're, we're doing going forward where um, different gyms, um, you know, different um, companies, you know, are now able to share from the fighter's perspective, from the fighter, from the athlete, from these champions, from these heroes, what they were able to do to get past some of their most troublesome situations, sharing solutions, not a sad story. Um, mm -hmm you know, taking a hundred providers, you know, and, and, and now making them a national resource, because what I see is that when someone is, is in a bind um, mentally or when they're triggered and they're having a crisis, they kind of have tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. So, you know, their eyes are closed are kind of blind. And so they don't know who do I call right now? You know, there are people that want a solution right away. They don't want to wait six months. They don't want to wait a year. They don't know that they'll make it that that long. So, um, you know, it, it it's something that by bringing these providers together and they're carefully vetted out, and now they have the, the power and strength of, of reaching many through their message. They don't have to be one provider stuck in the closet. Now they can come out openly and be powered with these businesses. So it, it's a big step, 
um, to do this because um, one of the issues why mental health has not been addressed the way it should is because in the government side and the business side and even in the medical, so many of our sectors are just straight up compromised. You know, they they are compromised entirely. You you either have individuals or you have entities that they don't seek to gain from mental health, um, go, you know, going going to a better place. Um, you know, your alcohol companies, your cigarette companies, you know, and, and, and there's others. They don't gain financially from people making better decisions, um, from people being less impulsive and, and you know, thinking through, um, you know, these different crises and et cetera. So there's much more to this um, in public interest, uh, foreign interests. I mean, you have all these different interests, business interests, personal interests. And these things get in the way of progress. And, and so instead of taking the time to just highlight who the scumbags are, because there are definite scumbags. Um, and, 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 you know, in the spiritual side of things, um, they are now being, being sent more towards a dark path on their own. And we're bringing more of these individuals to the light. And what you're going to see is a, a bigger uh, change because the, the more we wait um, on a big solution, I mean, the bigger the problem is, is, is getting in uh, when you have chaos and you have too much chaos, you can't have business, you can't have education, um, you know, you can't have, um, you know, growth and things of this nature when you just have too much chaos. I mean, too much violence and um, too much uh, hostility. So by solving these issues, business gets better. Our society gets better. You know, we get healthier. You know, you, you, you'll have a, a better life for all. So it's, it's not about being invested in what I want to do personally or what I care about. It's about being invested in what helps the world. I love that you mentioned that. Because one thing that incredible that WBC is doing more to support the mental health as well. I wanted to mention in the UK, um, England Boxing, which is like the leading amateur boxing association. Um, they mm -hmm. recently introduced a course called a Mind Course. So it's a course based around mental health and boxing which is incredible i'll be doing that one later on this year and then also a friend of mine former professional kickboxer he started a business which is called try box and it ties mm. some of the interest of how boxing or combat sports and the benefits and how it can help around your mental health and sharing some mental health strategies so perhaps i believe there could be some uh, definitely some collaboration or or good connection there in terms of you know working you know on separate parts different sides of the atlantic but with the same mission and goal to empower others to improve their mental health so they can live healthier lives and again egypt brother it's been such a pleasure today and you know i've taken Absolutely. so much knowledge as you probably guessed i've been taking notes as we've been speaking yeah you know, so always just taking on the gems once again, so very grateful for your time. Lastly, for those who want to follow you and you follow your journey, one where is a good place for them to follow you? And then lastly, what's like your final message to the world that you want to make sure that, you know, people have taken and taken on board? Absolutely. Um, well, um, thank you for having me today. Uh, very honored. This is a great platform and um, I'll send others your way because I, I thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. And uh, again, thank you for having me. Um, where they can follow me is at official Egypt X, uh, Egypt like the country, X like Xavier. Um, and then we also have um, our website, fightformentalhealth.com. Um, but most importantly, you can also follow us on Instagram at official fight for mental health. Um, and it's like the number four. Um, and, and in addition, um, you know, we are open to collaborating with anyone um, out there that's, you know, working in this field. Uh, we're not too good. We're not too cool. Uh, we're not too isolated to work with anyone. So um, I, I'm always open to the right collaboration. Um, as far as my final message, um, what what is really powerful for all of us is to understand that even if we were to save one, if, if one person were to get saved, 
um, through our program, through your program, through through um, just being positive um, in the right manner and, and just giving someone hope, um, then it's worth it. You know, you never know what that one person, they can become a president, they can become a world leader, um, they can become a powered executive, or they may start an organization where they help people too. So, um, you know, instead of always looking at the hundreds, the thousands and, and the millions, um, sometimes it's, it's important to focus on if we can help just one. Love it. Wow. Well, that's an incredible message to finish on. Um, thanks again for your time. I'm sure I'll be coming over to the States sh shortly uh, next year. So we'd love to collab, you know, meet in person. And again, if ever you're in the UK, um, London, by absolute, definitely need to connect. More than happy to help and, and yeah, put you in touch. I look forward to it. Thank you so much for having me today, Karen. Pleasure. Thanks, Egypt.